In this how to play video, you'll learn about game setup and the round to round bookkeeping necessary for a game of Tales from the Red Dragon Inn. Tales from the Red Dragon Inn is a cooperative dungeon crawl adventure game that can be played by one to four players with no GM necessary. Tales is also a campaign based game. Each game session, you'll play through one of the 25 scenarios of the game in order, unlocking new content as you pile on the victories. To play Scenario 1, you'll need the components listed on the front of the walkthrough. Specifically, make sure you have the blue, red, and yellow initiative tokens, the trap and door tokens, and the Gizmoblin, Robogre, and Sparking Engine standees. Take the map labeled 1 Danger Room Debacle from the Maps folder and leave the rest inside. Most importantly, keep the walkthrough and the Chapter 1 Scenario Book handy. These videos are supplements to the rulebooks included in Tales and not replacements. You'll still need to read the walkthrough and refer to the scenario books in order to play the game, and you should still open up the reference manual if you need to look up a term or settle an argument. Before you can start playing, there's a bit of setup to take care of. Unfold the map and place it on your table, and place the epic pool next to it. Place a door token on each of the door spaces. Next, prepare the schemers by assembling their standees and tracker decks. Reading the chart on page 1 of the Chapter 1 Scenario Book, we can see that we need the Gizmoblin standees numbered 1 through 5, 5 blue standee bases, and the blue damage tracker cards numbered 1 through 5. There's only one Robogre and one Sparking Engine in this scenario, so you'll only need one standee base and one tracker card for red and yellow. Assemble the standees, shuffle light-colored damage tracker cards together, and place these prepared components next to their corresponding scheme blocks on the map. Here is the first deployment chart of the game. There are three main columns based on how many players are tackling the scenario. In this example, we're going to have three players. The columns show which labeled hexes on the map will have what figures or tokens placed on them during deployment. In this case, the hexes labeled B, C, and D will get a Gizmoblin, and the hex labeled A will get a trap token with two damage counters on it. This shows how much damage the trap will do. When you deploy a Schemer figure, first reveal a random card from that Schemer's tracker deck, then place the matching numbered standee in the first deployment space listed for that Schemer in the chart. Repeat this process until each listed space on the deployment table has a schemer deployed to it. Then, take the revealed tracker cards, sort them in numerical order, and spread them out near their matching scheme block. Each player chooses a hero at the start of each game. Your choice isn't permanent for the whole campaign, and each hero levels up together, so don't worry about getting locked in. For this example game, our three heroes will be Fiona, Deirdre, and Gog. Take your player mat and place it in front of you with its fresh side up. Take your hero's starting cards and place them face up in front of you as well. In the heroes section for each scenario, you'll get a reminder of the cards and components you'll need for each hero, so be sure to check there if you're uncertain. Tales from the Red Dragon Inn is played in rounds. The round order for any given scenario can be found in the playing the round block printed on the map for that scenario. Some may be slightly different from others, but every scenario will have a ready phase, a combat phase, and an objective phase in that order. During the ready phase, players will handle bookkeeping tasks that prepare the game for the new round of play. First, players remove exactly one cooldown token from each ability that has any on it. This is important because you can't use abilities that have any cooldown tokens on them. Second, players will roll a scheme die for each type of schemer with a figure currently on the map. Roll the dice one at a time, one for each schemer block, and put it on the scheme with a matching icon. All figures for a particular type of schemer will use the same scheme when they activate. In this way, players will know what to expect from their foes during the combat phase. The last step of the ready phase is filling the initiative bag. Players will take the initiative tokens for each hero and each type of schemer with at least one figure currently on the map and add them to the initiative bag. One initiative token is used for each type of schemer, regardless of how many individual figures of that type are on the map. During the combat phase, figures will take turns maneuvering on the map and attacking each other. 
The order in which figures take turns is randomized by drawing initiative tokens from the initiative bag one at a time. When the initiative bag is empty, the round continues to the objective phase. If that sounds exceedingly brief, don't worry. We'll cover what heroes and schemers do during the combat phase in the other two videos. During the objective phase, players will check on their progress through the scenario. Each scenario has unique objectives and win and lose conditions, so make sure you read the stop points at the end of each section carefully. Objectives are checked during this phase to see if players should move to the next section of the scenario in the scenario book. If any of the lose conditions are met, the players lose immediately, even if it's not the objective phase. Lose conditions usually include the defeat of one of the heroes, so don't let your teammates fall. If it's the objective phase and the players have met the win conditions, they win. Often you won't know the win conditions for a scenario, though, until you've reached the last section of that scenario. If you lose, just reset the scenario and try again. There's no penalty. If you win, you'll unlock some cards from the vault and move on to the next scenario. Thanks for watching! If you'd like to stick around for more Tales viewing, we recommend the next How to Play video featuring Hero Turns. You can also watch the folks at Slugfest Games play Tales on some of our uploaded streams.